you obviously want to help people improve their brains all around the world. You're literally very vocal about your mission to create this revolution for brain health, which is so awesome. But you can't want it more than the individual who needs to change. So how do you not necessarily <laughs> not necessarily force someone to change, but if, if someone comes in and you're like, you deep down, or well not deep down, you, you know immediately that this person needs help, they need to change, or they're gonna go to an early grave, or they're gonna put an unbelievable burden in many ways on their family members who are still around. How do you initiate change for people who don't want it in the present? You nudge, you inform, you do what you can to motivate, and ultimately it's on them. And, and I have a very personal example of this. 1979, I told my dad I wanted to be a psychiatrist and he asked me why I didn't want to be a real doctor, why I wanted to be a nut doctor and hang out with nuts all day. I was not close with my dad. My dad worked all the time. The only time I saw him was when he took me to work and he was not a positive person for me. And I'm the second son in a Lebanese family, which meant you're relevant. Or, because I'm saying all this stuff with Prince Harry and you know, the title of his book, Spare, it makes me feel so bad for him because I used to have that mindset of being second. Now, when I corrected my thoughts, I want to be the second son. I don't want to be the person that's expected to become the king or in my world to expected to run the grocery business, which was my brother, right? I have the freedom to do anything I want. My dad and I did not have a close relationship. And I learned, no, I do what I want to do. So I became a psychiatrist and I started looking at the brain and I'm like, it's not mental health, it's brain health. You gotta get your brain healthy, which means you gotta get your body healthy because your body supports your brain. And so in the early 90s, I'm like, dad, you gotta get healthy. Cause you know, I mean, all the time I've loved him. Dad, you gotta get healthy. And he's like, oh great. The nut doctor is now a health nut. <laughs> and literally 25 years, he'd make fun of me, he'd belittle me, and it's irritating. But because I was not bonded with him, I would let it sort of run off my back. But you know, deep down, it's still mm. hurtful. What he would say to people, and he was a powerful guy, he's chairman of the board of a $4 billion company. He's like, I don't get heart attacks, I give them. And then he'll tell a story about it, he chewed somebody out and they had a heart attack. <laughs> and that's my dad. But in 19, when he was, 85, I guess it's about 10 years ago, they had mold in their house and he developed a chronic cough and then a heart arrhythmia and heart failure. And it's the first time I saw my dad depressed. And one day I went over his house. I could just tell he was so sad. He's like, I'm sick of being sick. What do you want me to do? The only reason he asked me that question is I'm an authentic person. I live the message of brain health. And he saw that for 25 years. So leading by example was the biggest. And he did everything I asked him to do. And in six months, he lost 40 pounds. He and I work out every Sunday. He's texting me, can I eat this? Can I eat that? And I'm one of seven. And all he's doing is talking about me to my siblings. Like, well, your brother wouldn't like that. You should talk to your brother about that. And they're like texting me. Can you tell him to like lighten up? <laughs> it, it made all of it worthwhile. Because when you live by example, when people need you, when they want you, and that's the only time they'll change, when they need you and when they want you, he changed. Mm. And it was so special. Mm.